Alright, so today we are going to be solving equations and expressions that involve absolute value. Well, remember, any equation with an absolute value defines an upper and the lower range in which the value must lie. Remember, absolute value, we're talking about distance. Alright, so the first thing we're going to be doing is solving expressions that involve absolute value. Um, so what we have here, we have, remember these two these two longer lines, these denote absolute value. So the absolute value of m plus 6 minus 11. We're trying to find the answer. If m is equal to 4. So with this case, all that we have to do, wherever we see m, we just have to plug in 4. So I can rewrite this expression. The absolute value of 4 plus 6 minus 11. So the first thing that we do is to solve within the absolute values. So we would do 4 plus 6 is equal to 10. Now what is the absolute value of 10? The absolute value, remember, the absolute value is always positive because we're talking about distance. Distance is always positive. It is never negative. So we can rewrite this equation the absolute value of 10 is 10 so we would have 10 minus 11 and that is equal to a negative 1 so if m plus 6 the absolute value of m plus 6 minus 11 if m is equal to 4 our answer is negative 1 so now what I want you to do is to pause the video, try this one, and unpause the video when you're ready to see what I have done. Alright, so what I have is 16 minus the absolute value of g plus 9 if g is equal to negative 4. So all we'd have to do is just take wherever we see g, plug in negative 4, so we can rewrite the equation 16 minus the absolute value of negative 4 plus 9. So if, let's solve uh, within, the parent, uh, within the absolute value first. So negative 4 plus 9 is equal to 5, a positive 5. So rewrite the rest of the equation. So we have 16 minus the absolute value of 5. Remember, absolute values are always positive. So we can rewrite the equation. 16 minus 5, that is equal to 11. And 11 is our final answer. So what we just did was working on expressions. Now we're moving into some of the equations. So this is one of the main points. When you are solving absolute value equations, treat the answer on the right as a positive and a negative. Then you solve the equation. So, for example, I have the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 5. So, we're supposed to treat the answer on the right as both a positive and a negative. So, I'm going to rewrite, rewrite it both ways. So the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 5. This is the positive side. Now the negative side, I'm going to rewrite it. Absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to a negative 5. If you, re if you notice, this side is the positive 5. This side is the negative 5. From here, you just solve. So, you think of it as x minus 3. So, what is what minus 3 is equal to 5? If we do it, if we can add 3 to both sides, so we have these cancel, then x is equal to 8. Now, let's go over to the other side. Since we have x minus 3 is equal to negative 5, we're going to 
add three to the left side and then add three to the right side so from this we will have x is equal to negative two the final answer is both x is equal to eight and x is equal to negative two there will be two answers so let's try another one. We have the absolute value of n plus 7 is equal to 6. Remember, we are going to write as a positive and write it as a negative. So, the first one we have the absolute value of n plus 7 is equal to 6. And the second one, we have the absolute value of n plus 7 is equal to a negative 6. So let's solve the first one. We have n plus 7. At the, if you're adding 7, we'll subtract 7 from both sides. So n is equal to, what is 6 minus 7? That's equal to a negative 1. Now, on the other side, we have n plus 7 again. So we'll subtract 7 to both sides. So n is equal to negative 13. So our final answer, n could be negative 1, or n could be negative 13. So think about it. If we have, what you could do is just plug it back in. If n is equal to negative 1, negative 1 is up here, we plug it this back in. Negative 1 plus 7 is 6. And what's the absolute value of 6? Is 6. If we have n is equal to negative 13, if we plug negative 13 back up to n, what is negative 13 plus 7? That's equal to a negative 6. So, what is the absolute value of a negative 6? That's also equal to 6. So that's why we have a positive 6 and why we have a negative 6. All right, now I want you guys to try this one. Pause the video, uh, attempt the example, and then unpause the video to see what I have done. All right, so remember, we're going to have to rewrite this two different ways. We'll solve it as a positive. So if we have the absolute value of 3x minus 3 is equal to a positive 9, and then the next side we have the absolute value of 3x minus 3 is equal to a negative 9. So let's work on the uh, the positive 9 first. So we can add 3 to both sides. Those will cancel. So all we have left on the left side is 3x is equal to 12. Now we could to find x, we could divide by 3, or think about it as what times 3 is equal to 12. So x, in this case, is equal to a positive 4. Now, if we go over to the right side, if we have 3x minus 3 is equal to negative 9, again, we will add 3 to both sides. So then we have 3x is equal to negative 9 plus 3 is equal to a negative 6. So 3 times what is equal to a negative 6? Or we could just divide across, divide by 3. So we have x is equal to negative 2. So our final answer is x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 4. If you want to double check, all that you have to do, plug this number up into here. So what is 3 times 4, which is 12, 12 minus 3 is 9. The absolute value of a positive 9 is 9. So that one's correct. And now we have the next one, x is equal to a negative 2. So plug that bin up here. 3 times a negative 2 is equal to a negative 6. 
negative 6 minus 3 is equal to a negative 9. But now what is the absolute value of a negative 9? That is a positive 9. So this is correct as well. Alright, this is another main point. So, what if the answer is already negative? By that I mean if this answer right here, if we have negative 3, and the one over to the right, if we have negative 6, remember, distance cannot be negative. Cannot be negative. Important. So, if the answer is already negative, then there is no solution. All you really have to put, no solution. No solution for either one of them. That is only if this answer is a negative. If the answer is already a negative, then there is no solution. Alright, so when we're uh, writing absolute value equations, sometimes we might be just be giving a number line with two points on them, and they're telling us to write an absolute value equation. I have two steps for you. So the first step, all you, have, all you would have to do is to find the midpoint between the two numbers. That goes inside the absolute value. So with the midpoint, what I'm talking about is we have our points 4 and negative 2. So we try to find what is directly in the middle, which it looks like it is positive 1. So that goes inside of the absolute value positive one. Second step, you count the distance from the midpoint to one of the points. That's your answer. So let's start from one, see how far over it goes to four. So we have one, two, three. So the distance from one to four is three. So that goes into our answer. Now what we want to do, we need to figure out what type of sign we're going to be putting in between the x and the 1. So what you could do, remember one of our points is 4, so, so how do we go from 3 to 4? One way that we could do that is to add 1. But Remember if we're going to add 1 up here to get these to cancel out, we would do the opposite. So our answer would be the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 3. This is our final answer. Alright, so now what I want you to do is to pause the video and try this one. Unpause the video when you're ready to see what I have done. Alright, so our first step is to find the midpoint. If we have a negative 6 and we have a positive 6, looks like our midpoint is going to be here at the 0. So we put that inside of the absolute value. Now we're trying to find the distance from 0 to 6 which is 6. So that goes outside of the on, or on the equal sign. So now we're trying to see what goes are we going to have an addition or a subtraction sign. So remember anything plus 0 um, is always going to be itself, or anything minus zero is always going to be itself. So we could either just put a positive or a negative here. In this case, I'm just going to put a plus. This could be rewritten as just the absolute value of x is equal to 6. And this would be your final answer.